people with purpose goals and visions have no time for drama in fact they invest their energy in doing creative work and focus on their positive living so with this thought a very fresh good morning to all yesterday we have done about the two types of mixtures that is heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures let us discuss these type of mixture one more time in detail when we talk about homogeneous mixtures this mixture consists of different constituents which are not at all visible through naked eyes their boundaries of separation are not at all visible they are spread uniformly in the mixture but on the other hand when we talk about heterogeneous mixture the composition is not uniform throughout in fact we can easily see the separate boundaries of the constituents present in the mixture which is known as heterogeneous mixture now let us discuss the types of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture today yes a homogeneous mixture is of one type only which is also known as solution and heterogeneous mixture are of two types that is colloids and suspension which we will be discussing later on let us start with today's topic that is solutions a homogeneous mixture yes a solution is considered as a homogeneous mixture but first of all the very first question arises in our mind why a solution is considered as a mixture because it can be separated into its component by any physical method in fact it shows the property of its constituents it has a variable composition what does it mean it means in any amount we can add the types of substances to make a solution the substance which is present in the less amount is known as solute and the substance which is present in more amount is considered as solvent so when we dissolve a solute in a solvent then a solution is formed a solution may have a small amount of solute dissolved in it while another solution may have a large amount of solute dissolved in it if the solution having very small amount of solute it is said to have low concentration it is also known as dilute solution if on the other hand solution having large amount of solute it is said to be of higher concentration and the solution is known as concentrated solution so we can define the concentration of a solution as it is the amount of the solute present in a given amount of the solution likewise you can see the example on the basis of the concentration of solute present in the solution the solution can be classified as of two types that is unsaturated and saturated solution the very first we are having unsaturated solution basically this unsaturated solution is that solution in which we can add more and more solute particles and they can completely dissolve as soon as we are adding more solute particles they become dissolved completely in a solvent so this kind of solution in which we are adding more and more solute particles in the solvent is regarded as unsaturated solution the next we are having saturated solution in which no more solute particles can be dissolved at a particular temperature for example you are adding salt common salt in water and you keep on adding the salt in water and it gets dissolved completely but the time will come when it stop dissolving in the water so that we can say that no more solute particles will be dissolved in the solution now and hence the solution becomes saturated let us understand it better with the upcoming video as you can see in the glass of water we are adding salt to make solution and we keep on stirring it and you can see the salt in the water is completely dissolved and at this time the solution is considered as unsaturated because the amount of solute we have added it's completely dissolved and even more particles can be dissolved now see here we have added some more amount of salt in it so 
what are you observing here you are observing that no more solute particles that is salt particles are dissolved in water and hence the solution is considered as saturated it means now no more solute particles will be dissolved at this room temperature so the solution is becoming saturated one i hope you have understood the saturated and unsaturated solution let us now do another workout take a beaker and dissolve some amount of salt in it go on adding salt to the solution as long as the salt is dissolved in water the solution is an unsaturated solution but a stage will soon come when you will not be able to dissolve more salt in the solution at this stage the solution becomes saturated thus a solution is said to be saturated if it cannot dissolve any more quantity of the given substance in it now i hope you have understood the meaning of saturated and unsaturated solution there is one more type of solution which is known as super saturated it means it is having more dissolved solute than the normally which is possible at a given condition of temperature and pressure now let us understand what will happen when we increases the temperature of saturated solution a solution is saturated at a particular temperature only if the saturated solution is heated to a higher temperature then it becomes unsaturated as the solubility of the solute particle increases on heating and more and more solute particles can be dissolved when we increase the temperature of the solution on the other hand when we decrease the temperature of the saturated solution some of the dissolved solute particles get separate out in the form of solid crystals let us understand the effect of temperature on saturated solution with the help of upcoming video add a small quantity of salt to a saturated solution and heat it what happens to the undissolved salt at the bottom of the beaker yes it starts dissolving in the solution let this hot solution cool does the salt reappear to settle at the bottom of the beaker again yes it does students this activity shows that you can dissolve a large quantity of salt in water by heating discuss some of the properties of the solution the very first property we are having a solution is a homogeneous mixture how can we prove that for example let us take salt solution can you see the salt molecules in water no they are not visible hence we can say that in salt solution the boundaries of salt particles and water particles are not at all visible the salt molecules spread throughout the water molecules by taking the spaces between the water molecules hence we can say that a solution is a homogeneous mixture the size of the solute particles are very very small even they cannot be seen under the microscope can you see salt particles in salt solution no even under the microscope the salt particles not visible when we take filter paper and we try to pass the salt solution through filter paper the whole solution passes and no residue is left on the filter paper so we can say that the particles of the solution can easily passes through filter paper so solution cannot be separated into its constituent by filtration when we keep the salt solution aside the salt particles cannot get settled down at the bottom or even they cannot separated from solvent molecules hence we can say that the two solutions are very stable which means the particles of solute present in the solution they will not separate out on keeping aside when we try to pass the light through a solution it does not scatter the light the reason is the particles are very very small even you can say that the particles of the solution are so small they cannot reflect the light 
the next we are having the types of solution in which we will be taking different types of solute and solvent let us have a look on it when the solute and solvent particles both are gases the example we are having air like nitrogen present in the highest amount in air so we can say that nitrogen is acting as a solvent and other gases like oxygen carbon dioxide are solute here liquid in gas the example we are having the water molecules present in air gases in liquid we are having so many evaporated drinks like soda cold drinks in which carbon dioxide is present in water liquid in liquid lemon in is the best example the lemon juice in water solid in liquid have so many examples for this like sugar solution salt solution are very common example in which sugar and salt are the solids act as a solute particles here and solvent is water now the next category we are having solid in solid and the examples are alloys basically alloys are the homogeneous mixture of matters in which different matters they mix together in different ratio for example brass in which copper and zinc zinc mix together the next example we are having stainless steel in which chromium and nickel present in an iron i hope you have understood all the topics which we have done today here we are having assignment please go through this assignment and all the questions and if any query please write down in comment box so that i can resolve your problem have a nice day thank you so much